Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I hope that you, 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 you are doing very well. This is the first soft spoken video I've done in a very long time. I'm testing it out in my new studio. Let me know what you think. I still have a little bit of acoustical treatment. Acoustical, acoustical treatment to do, but I'm very happy with it. I'm actually filming this during the day, which was unheard of for me in Mexico, so I'm in a very good mood. <laughs> This video is all about books. If you've been following me for a while, you know that every so often I'll do a book theme video because books are so important to me. I love reading, I love listening to them, and I love talking about them. So, before we get started talking about what I've been reading and listening to, and some things I'm excited about reading and listening to. I want to thank the sponsor of tonight's video, Audible. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks, podcasts, and other spoken word entertainment. What I love about Audible is that they have something for everybody. They have bestsellers, new releases, memoirs, languages, they just have such a large selection. So how Audible works is you get one free credit every single month to choose a title in their premium collection, which is then yours to keep forever in your Audible library. You also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. You can download or stream their titles all you want, and their new included selection of titles makes an Audible membership that much more valuable and gives all members a chance to discover new favorites and new formats, like a podcast, and they even have ASMR, like some ASMR by Whispers Red, which I've been listening to and loving. But I wanted to talk about the fact that May is Mental Health Awareness Month, so I decided to listen this month to Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. It is such a good audiobook, you guys. The narrator is one of my favorite narrators that I've ever listened to, but also the story is about a therapist who is seeing a therapist after a bad breakup and is equal parts insightful and funny and entertaining. It just really cemented therapy being such an important resource for mental health work, and you guys know I love therapy. I'm a big advocate for it, and this book does a great job of giving you insights about what it's like to find a therapist and be a therapist. It's really good and I really recommend it. Audible is a great source to learn about different life experiences and grow as a person. And I think that this book is a great example of that. The app is also super easy to use and makes listening so convenient. If you're listening on your phone, and then decide later to listen on your computer. It knows where you left off, and it just couldn't be easier. And the app is also free to download, and if you want to start a 30-day free trial with Audible, you can click the link in my description, or go to audible.com slash Sarah L, or text Sarah L to 500-500. So thank you again, Audible, for sponsoring this video. Let's get right to it. What we're gonna do in this ASMR video is talk about what I've been reading, um, what I'm looking forward to reading, and some audiobooks I've listened to. I've actually listened to quite a large amount of hours of audiobooks because I recently drove from Mexico City back into the US and me and my partner just listened to audiobooks like the whole time because audiobooks are so good for like long road trips 
because sometimes you get tired of like listening to music. They're such a good way to pass the time. Which brings me to the very first audiobook I want to talk about, which I actually mentioned in the sponsorship intro, which is Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. It might be Gottlieb, but I think it's Gottlieb. Gottlieb. I think it's Gottlieb. <laughs> I have so many things to say about this. I'm actually not 100% on listening to it because it's a 15 or almost 15 hour audiobook, which is a very long audiobook, honestly. And I'm like 75% of the way through it. And I thought it would feel longer, but it hasn't. It's, it's so easy to listen to. And uh, I'm actually such a big fan. And the fact that the narrator is so good, I actually thought the narrator was the author because she was speaking. She was just like using the correct amount of emotion in every scene. I was like, oh, surely this is the author. But no, she's just a really good narrator. And I've talked before about how sometimes a narrator can ruin an audiobook, obviously. But she's so good. And you'll know what I mean if you listen to it. And when I was reading through the Goodreads reviews of this book, like half the Goodreads reviews were of the audiobook. So I think the audiobook is like a very popular way to consume this story, which makes sense because she's so good. <laughs> so as I mentioned, this audiobook is about a therapist who's in her either late 30s or early 40s. I think 40s actually. And she is going through a very bad and sudden breakup and she is a professional therapist and so she begins to search for therapists specifically to work through this period in her life, this rough breakup. Um, so the story is kind of about her finding this male therapist and you know it's so interesting being a therapist and working with a therapist and it was such a cool like look into that and actually in my therapist role play that I did like I don't know like four months ago or something I made a comment in that role play saying I'm a therapist I have a therapist my therapist has a therapist and I actually said that line in the role play because it's something that my therapist told me that she has a therapist and it's something you don't really think about but it's kind of cool like opening the curtain and seeing what's going on with your therapist. I really, really like this book. I actually am not in therapy right now, but I've been meaning, because I don't have health insurance, <laughs> work in progress. But I am actually looking to find a therapist again, kind of from scratch, because I'm in a new city. And this book is kind of like giving me hints and things to look for and like advice on how to find the right therapist and what your relationship should be with your therapist, what your therapist should be doing for you. In addition to the audiobook being about how she became a therapist, her journey as like a single mom becoming a therapist. Um, and then she also talks about like her patients, obviously in a very discreet names changed kind of way. But it's just, as somebody who loves therapy and who advocates therapy for everybody, I don't know. I am really vibing with this book. I think it might be one of my favorite non-fictions in a while. And something I also really like about this audiobook so far is that she uses, or she takes a lot of opportunities to kind of convert the story into advice and like self-help a little bit and you can tell she's very educated she actually got accepted into stanford medical school 
before she decided to become a therapist and um and she before that she was a tv writer and she was working on things like friends for season one so she's a very accomplished intelligent woman and to be honest sometimes her insights or the way she starts to give insight is a little cheesy sometimes she'll use like kind of cheesy analogies but because I know she's intelligent, I really take, I listen to the insight she has, and she's been a therapist for a long time. So she has advice on like, not even advice, just like insights into why humans act the way they do, why we tend to avoid certain things and act, if you're in therapy, like why you act the way you do in therapy, how hiding information is ultimately detrimental to growing and how like the purpose of therapy and what your therapist therapist should be trying to do is get you to improve mentally. I'm doing a bad job of explaining, but I don't know. I'm just very excited about this title and I didn't think I would be as excited. Um, and it's got me like excited to find a therapist. And I just want to say really quick that if you've never tried it, it takes it takes at least two sessions with a therapist to decide if you like them, not just one. And sometimes you have to try like two or three to find the one that meshes with you. She actually talks about one of the patients that she had to like break up with because the patient was frustrated with her and she felt like she wasn't helping the patient and it went on for a really long time until she had like every Friday she meets with other therapists to kind of talk about like a co-working space like to talk about different cases and like try to figure out how they can improve and like what they're doing wrong and what they're doing well and they all recommended that she break up with this patient for her own good because sometimes you know it's an important relationship and it takes time to find the right one. So yeah, um, I highly recommend it. I haven't finished it yet, but when I was scrolling through the Goodreads reviews, people said that the last quarter was like the best part and that they were like sobbing by the end of it. So I'm actually like very excited to read that. Well, that is enough about that one. That one was the one I was most excited to talk about. Next, we'll talk about what I am currently physically reading. Because I actually tend to listen to an audiobook and read a real book at the same time. Because, I don't know, they're both amazing, but they're kind of like for different situations. Like, listening to an audiobook is great for if you need to do things like clean, travel, blah, 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 on an airplane, and then books are good for, you know, so let me talk about the book that I am currently reading. So now we can get on to some actual book ASMR. Look at the yellow pages of this. This was an old So this is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So I'm actually very, I just started it. I'm like 30 pages in. I kept seeing all over the internet this book recommended if you're into dark academia, which is like a book that takes place in like a school setting, but with like darker themes, more like serious, gothic undertones. And I saw this recommended so much that I thought it was a newer book. I thought it had just come out. And when I found this at like a half price books, I was like this, 
Wait, this is an old book. Look at this. much about it other than first impressions. She is a very good writer and you can tell that pretty quickly within the first like 20 or 30 pages if they're good at writing. Maybe not. I don't know yet. Well, I mean, number one bestseller. I know it's like a very good book. I'm going to find out if I end up really liking it, but so far I'm like in love with her writing. I really, really like it. Let me read you the back. Richard Pappin had never been to New England before his 19th year. Then he arrived at Hamden College and quickly became seduced by the sweet, dark rhythms of campus life in particular by an elite group of five students, Greek scholars, which means that they are studying ancient Greek, which I know because I read the first couple pages, <laughs> worldly, self-assured, and at first glance, highly unappro unapproachable. Yet as Richard was accepted and drawn into their inner circle, inner circle, he learned a terrifying secret that bound them to one another. A secret about an incident in the woods in the dead of night where an ancient rite was brought to brutal life and led to a gruesome death. And that was just the beginning. So, like, you know from the prologue, it's almost... I would not call it a murder mystery. I think it's more about the events that lead up to a murder. <sighs> but I already relate so much with the main character, and I think he comes from, like, rural California, who moves to just, like, white trash California, and he moves to New England, where there's, like, all this wealth, and it's just so different, and I've actually never been to New England. I've never been really north, east at all. So I kind of really have already attached myself to him because I, I spent the majority of my life in like small town Texas. <laughs> so I'm already like, oh, I can only imagine growing up there and then going to somewhere like dark and moody and rainy and wealthy and educated New England. You know what I mean? I know some people will understand what I'm saying, but... So, I already like that the protagonist isn't just another... Like, I always like when the protagonist is a little bit of an outlier. Because then you're, as the reader, you're seeing through their eyes and you can put themselves in your shoe. Put yourself in their shoe. This was like a new, a new book because people are still talking about it. I don't have too much more to say about this because I only have a very brief first impression, but I think I'm going to like it a lot. From the sound of it, had I stayed in California, I might have ended up in a cult. <laughs> or at very least practicing some weird dietary restriction. I remember reading about Pythagoras around this time and finding some of his ideas curiously appealing. Wearing white 
but instead I wound up on the East Coast. I lit on Hamden by a trick of fate. Hamden College, Hamden, Vermont. Vermont and California are like almost as far apart as you can be. So yeah, I will make another video in which I talk about my final opinions on this, but I'm very excited. The next is an audiobook that I listened to called American Kingpin by Nick Bilton. The epic hunt for the criminal mastermind behind the Silk Road. So this is another non-fiction audiobook. I think I honestly prefer non-fiction for audiobooks. This was pretty much what I listened to the entire drive from Mexico to the US. And it was so fun to listen to. The narrator was also pretty good. Not as good as the last one I talked about, but still pretty good. But it was really the story that was really exciting. It felt like a movie or a documentary or something. But basically it's about... It's the story of the person who created the Silk Road. And if you don't know what that is, the modern Silk Road was a website on the dark web in which you could buy drugs, weapons. It was a huge enterprise where people could very easily access and order online drugs and other illegal things. And it was just so interesting because it kind of was started by a very average, intelligent person. He was extremely libertarian. He had ideas that all drugs should be legal and the government should not be in charge of telling people which things they could put in their body and what they could do with their body. And it started with him opening this website on the dark web and selling his own homegrown mushrooms, magic mushrooms. And then it kept growing and growing and growing and growing and he started selling all kinds of drugs. Not him, but it became like a marketplace for other people to sell drugs through this website. But then it turned into like selling firearms and stuff illegally. And it's a story of where this person came from, how he founded it, and then also the story of the US government trying to catch him and how they caught him. It, it was really good. It's really, I wouldn't say I learned all that much from it, besides like the story of what happened. It was more just like a really interesting documentary is the best way I could describe it. You know, those documentaries where you don't really know anything about it and then you watch it and you're just like, whoa, how did I not know about this? Yeah, I recommend it. I think it's fun. It's crazy. He didn't know anything about coding. Um, but he still started this like million, multi-million dollar drug empire, and I think it was the first of its kind on the dark web. And how hard it was for him to be caught at first. Yeah. I honestly don't have that much to say on it, except that it was very entertaining. And I've always been kind of a sucker for learning about the dark web. For those of you who don't know, it's like a second internet completely hidden and everyone is totally anonymous. It's completely hidden. A lot of illegal activity happens on it, but also just things that maybe you don't want the government or other people knowing about, which does tend to err on the side of illegal. But that kind of stuff is like super, super, super fascinating to me. And so this book was fun kind of learning more about it and how it operates. 
rights and also how the government goes about trying to catch somebody like this that's why it's called American Kingpin because he was it just grew so quickly into this huge thing that he was barely in control of towards the end but yeah highly recommend that audiobook so the second part of this video is going to be books that I have not read yet it's more of like a haul type video at this point so this is another book that is being so raved about same with the next book I'm going to talk about and since I haven't read it as you can tell it's very clean and new another Asian-inspired fantasy book and I'm very curious how I will like this because I recently finished Jade City which is an Asian-inspired kind of like urban fantasy book which I liked but I didn't love it as much as I thought it would so I did not read the next two books in that trilogy So we are going to see how I feel about this one. It comes very highly recommended, but so did Jade City, so I'm curious. Let me read the synopsis. She is a peasant. She is a student. She is a soldier. Soldier. <laughs> she is a goddess. Hmm. When Rin aced the Keju, the empire-wide test to find the most talented youth to study at the academies, it was a shock to everyone. To the test officials who couldn't believe a war orphan from the Rooster province could pass without cheating. To Rin's guardians, who always thought they'd be able to marry Rin off to further their criminal enterprise. And to Rin herself, who realized she was now finally free of the servitude and the spare that made up her daily existence, that she got into Sign Guard, the most elite military school in the Nikara Empire, was even more surprising. Being a dark skinned peasant girl from the south is not an easy thing at Syngard. Rin is targeted from the outset by rival classmates because of her color, poverty, and gender. Driven to desperation, she discovers she possesses a lethal, unearthly power, an aptitude for the nearly mythical art of shamanism. Okay, it's actually a very long synopsis and I don't want to spoil too much for you or for me, but that already is so interesting to me, especially bringing colorism into it. Because I know colorism is such an issue in a lot of Asian countries, and I actually did not know that about this book. So yeah, I am very excited to read this. I believe this is also part of a series and I love fantasy series some people don't but I love 
Kind of something I wish books outside of fantasy did more. So next up I have another extremely fantasy book, or extremely popular <laughs> fantasy book that I think I'm even more excited about. And I honestly might read that one before this one, but I don't know. You guys let me know when you see what the next one is. If you've read both, which one you liked more. Okay. The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Wait till you guys see how big this book is. Oh my god. This is a huge book and the fantasy nerd in me is honestly so excited about it, if it ends up being as good as they say. Again, I'm pretty sure. But I don't know if this is part of a series. I actually don't know. But between the Poppy War and the Priory of the Orange Tree, if you guys have read, if you guys have read both, which one did you like more? one. I like the cover. And I... Th is it another Asian inspired? <laughs> Let's read the synopsis. A world divided. A queendom without an heir. An ancient enemy awakens. The house of Barithnet has ruled Innis for, the for a thousand years. Still unwed, Queen Sabron the Ninth must conceive a daughter to protect her realm from destruction. But assassins are getting closer to her door. Eid, Aid, Durian is an outsider at court. Though she has risen to the position of lady in waiting, she is loyal to a hidden society of mages. Ed, Aid, keeps a watchful eye on Sabron, secretly protecting her with forbidden magic. Across the dark sea, Tane has trained all her life to be a dragon rider, but is forced to make a choice that could see her life unravel. Meanwhile, the divided east and west refuse to parlay, and forces of chaos are rising from their sleep. Now this sounds like an epic fantasy. Kingdoms, political issues, a lot like Game of Thrones. And when done well is some of my favorite fantasy. I thought maybe it was like Asian inspired because the dragon is so long. And I know dragons in like Asian mythology are very long. And like dragons in Western mythology are like beefy dragons, you know? <laughs> this was a New York Times bestseller. And the cover is just so beautiful. I'm very excited about this book. That is going to take me a while to read, though. book smell. Um, yeah, not much else to say other than I'm very excited. I've been listening to all these kind of non-fiction audiobooks and while I've been loving them, I'm very excited for like a big fat fantasy story.
So the last audiobook is How to Train Your Mind by Chris Bailey, exploring the productivity benefits of meditation. Now this one is only three hours, so you can listen to this like in a day, if you have a lot of time, or two days. This one is more self-helpy. I think it is technically a self-help book compared to the other two audiobooks I talked about. Um, and it, I have a lot of thoughts on this. So it's a book about, or it's an audiobook about how meditation helps you become more productive. And I thought it was really interesting because it looks at meditation, which you guys know, I'm a, once again, I'm a big advocate for daily meditation mindfulness. And every other resource I've kind of looked into comes at it from like almost a spir spiritual mindset, comes at it from a different lens than this audiobook. This audiobook is very practical. It talks about how if you do meditation, it helps you become more focused and productive in a very almost clinical way. And when I was reading the reviews, some people were very angry about this. They're just like, I'm not doing meditation to learn how to be more productive in my job or in my my tasks. I'm doing meditation to be calmer and less anxious, which is how I've always looked at meditation a way to, as a way to help with anxiety, intrusive thoughts, etc. So this was interesting in that it was the first time that I listened to someone talk about how it can help you be more productive. And honestly, I liked it because I'm at a point in my life where, as my own boss, recently, not recently anymore, two years after quitting my engineering job and becoming my own boss in this very, like, artsy, you know, I'm a YouTuber, it's very, it's very, very, very different from being an engineer. And I struggle a lot with self-discipline and productivity. It's, I'm learning a lot about myself in this phase of my life. And I was pleasantly surprised to learn that meditation can help you become more productive, become less distracted when you're trying to work and accomplish a task. So while I understand other people who are saying they don't like this, audiobook because it takes away all of the magic and spirituality and kind of healing aspect of meditation. I don't know. I think depending on what you're looking for and where you are in your life, you would appreciate hearing this. If you are someone who isn't looking for something spiritual, etc. And I keep using that word, but you know what I mean by it, right? It doesn't have to mean religious or anything like that. If you're very practical and you're on the fence about meditation, this book is great to listen to, to learn about. Very practical ways that meditation can help you improve your life, your job, etc. And someone was saying like, I'm not looking to use meditation to become more of a benefit to my employer. And I think they took the wrong thing away from this. I think being productive doesn't always mean in your day job. Being productive can be in your hobbies, in the goals you're working towards outside of your career even. You know, you take what you want from it. And I, and again, it's only three hours, which is why I listened to it so quickly.
Well, actually, let me read some points. Meditation trains our minds to seek out fewer distractions because we get accustomed to getting by with less dopamine coursing through the brain. Dopamine addiction and a constant exposure to dopamine through your phone, all these different distraction sources, I think really is making us less able to focus and do things that aren't immediately gratifying. So that's why meditation helps. Studies show that each time we tend to a distraction that derails our focus completely, we lose 25 minutes of productivity. That's a quote from it. A mind that is less stimulated does not crave distraction nearly as much. I don't know. He had quite a bit of good information with a little bit of fluff, but overall I connected with, with what he was trying to say and I'm hoping to use that as motivation to continue to meditate, not only for my mental health, but also for what I consider in myself. Kind of like this dopamine addiction that so many of us have where we focus where we need constant stimulation. It's hard to do tasks for long amount of times or make yourself do something that you don't want to do that's boring. And meditation is kind of like a detox every day from that. So yeah, take, take what you will from that. Um, but I like you enjoyed this next installment of my ongoing book and story series. I love making videos like this just because I can talk forever <laughs> about books, so let me know if you've read any or listened to any of these in the comments if you have any recommendations and I'll have to check those out. And again, thank you so much for watching. Until, until next time.